Hi, this is Bill Bronchik, and I'd like to talk to you about the meltdown of the subprime mortgage market, what that means to you as a real estate investor. I've been getting a lot of calls and emails about this and asking for my opinions on how is this going to affect us as a real estate investor. Well, first thing you have to keep in mind is no matter what happens in the market, how can I make this work for me? So with that in mind, let's talk about it. What is the subprime market? The subprime market is the mortgage market lending to people who have either no income or no credit and usually it's in the lower end of the real estate market. And as you've seen over the last few years, people qualifying for loans that you're thinking to yourself, how in the world can this person qualify for this loan with no money down, with virtually no credit, no proof of income, interest only, with an arm loan, with an amortization that's negative, with a first and a second piggyback mortgage. It seems crazy, and it was crazy, and a lot of that has resulted in defaults and a lot of foreclosures. And a lot of the companies lending these subprime loans did get hurt badly, and actually a few of the big ones are going to go under. How does that affect us as a real estate investor? Well, if you are selling properties on the low end of the market on the retail basis, there's going to be less financing sources available, at least for the short term, until the lending market figures out who's going to step in and start lending to the people in the subprime market. For those of you who have been in the market for a while, you remember 10 or 15 years ago, or as recently as 7 or 8 years ago, there really was no market for people who did not have a down payment and bad credit, and that subprime market really wasn't a big market. As a result of all the defaults on those loans, we've seen uh, a backlash where a lot of lenders simply won't do those types of loans or they're making it more difficult. So if you are selling properties knowing that your end buyer was planning on going subprime in that market, realize that you've now got less qualified buyers, which means it's going to take longer to sell your property, and in many markets it may actually deflate prices. Lack of demand results in sellers having to drop their prices or sellers having to carry back a significant portion of their profit as a owner carry note. Now how does that work? For example, let's say the typical buyer would have to put down 10% uh, in a $100,000 house, that would be $10,000, and then got a loan for $90,000. In the subprime market, these, lend these lenders were giving these borrowers a 90% first mortgage, 10% second mortgage, or an 80% $80,000 first mortgage and a 20,000 20% second mortgage. In this case, you may have to carry back some of that purchase price. So if the borrower can get, let's say, 90% as a loan, you can carry back 10,000 or 10% as a carry back. Is that the worst thing in the world? Not necessarily. The chances are that the borrower in the subprime is going to end up defaulting. You may lose your uh, note and second mortgage position on the property. So make sure if you are selling the property that if you're getting some profit out of it, if your only profit is this note, there's a good chance that this note will be in default and you won't get your money because honestly, if the property's worth 100 and there's a $90,000 first foreclosing in front of you, you're going to lose your position. In an appreciating market, that works okay because your position will grow in that if the property is worth 100,000 and next year is worth 110 or 120,000, your second mortgage may have some actual value. Or you can sell off that note as part of a portfolio to other investors who might consider foreclosing the property. So that's how uh, the collapse of the subprime might affect you in that realm. In another realm, it actually may to inure to your benefit. I noticed that between 2000 and 2004, my rental properties were vacant. Your rental properties, if you had them, you probably noticed the same thing. Why is that? Because when interest rates are low and money is easy to get, the people who would normally be your tenants will be going out to get loans instead of renting properties. Why? Because it's cheaper to go out and get a 4% loan and buy a property than it is to actually rent a property. Now that the subprime market may be drying up quite a bit, what do we have? We have more tenants. So all of a sudden, if you're in the landlord business, even if your properties are not going up in value, in fact, some of my properties are going down in value, at the same time, my rents are going up. How could that be happening? Well, it's simple supply and demand economics. If there are more renters, that means there's more demand and landlords can now raise their rent. So what you'll notice and you'll continue to notice is an increase in the demand for rental properties and increase in rents. Also, there's the natural effect of if people in these low-income neighborhoods got foreclosed and left their property, now if they want to stay in the neighborhood, they've got to rent. So we're seeing some of that. We're seeing an increase in demand for rents. In addition, one thing I did notice over the last few years, and you may have noticed it as well, is selling properties by a lease option or owner finance, like a land contract or wraparound, has been more difficult. 
Typically, we used to get 3 or 5% down on a lease option, and you probably noticed the same thing, too. It was difficult to find anyone who even wanted a lease option because they could simply buy a property with no money down. Now we're going to see the opposite effect. People who cannot qualify for loans with poor income or have no money will have to go back into doing rent-to-own properties or owner financing, and that's good for you as a real estate investor. So in this market right now where there are some good bargains in foreclosures, if you can buy up these properties, finance these properties with good low interest rate loans, and then turn around and sell them on a lease with option or an owner finance with, let's say, a one or two or three year balloon, and help these tenant buyers or buyers on owner financing improve their credit so they're not subprime borrowers anymore. Now they're regular uh, A credit borrowers or maybe A minus credit borrowers, and they can qualify for a loan. You're going to make money. It's as simple as that. So, in every situation where there is, let's say, a change in the market that people are crying, oh my God, what's going to happen now? Look for the opportunity. I think the opportunity is there right now. Buying up properties as cheap as you can and financing them at today's still very, very low interest rates can be a very good play. And if you're in the business of offering owner financing or lease with option, you're going to do pretty well. This is Bill Bronchick, and thanks for joining. Hi, this is Bill Bronchick again, and I'd like to invite you to the Foreclosure Investing Boot Camp, an intense training on May 18th, 19th, and 20th to the lucky few people who get in at my private training center right here in my office. Just 35 lucky people will participate in a small group intense training. The small classroom setting means that you're going to get all the personal attention you need to learn all the techniques where you can make money in today's foreclosure market, including bank REOs, short sales, subject to transactions, and all the details and paperwork you need to make money in today's great lucrative opportunities in the foreclosure market. Hurry up and sign up right away at foreclosureinvestingbootcamp.com. I look forward to seeing you personally at the event.